What's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. I want to talk a little bit about the Great Tribulation today, and the title of this video is The Great Tribulation is Not in Your Future. It is in your past, and we'll look at the Scripture to do that. We'll look at Matthew chapter 24. We will look at a little bit of Luke 21. We'll look at Daniel chapter 9, and we might even hit Daniel 12, which I don't think we've touched much. So don't forget to like and subscribe down below, and we'll look at Matthew 24 if you've got just a few minutes. Matthew 24 needs to be understood in the context of really everything that's going on here. Jesus' conversation from Matthew 23 with the scribes and the Pharisees. I'll let you go back and read it, but essentially what Jesus is saying is, you guys are filling up the measure of your guilt. So fill up the measure of your guilt from Abel all the way uh, to the blood of Zechariah, son of Barakai, the judgment is going to come upon that generation. And this great tribulation is going to be a period of, I believe, three and a half years um, that they are going to see in first century Jerusalem. And first century Jerusalem, meaning that this judgment specifically is going to come up on those who are apostate, this is going to be a judgment that is also on the political powers as well, but this judgment is going to come in the form of Rome against Jerusalem to destroy the covenant people who had gone apostate, or to say it another way, to judge Babylon the harlot who is Jerusalem, the ones who had killed Christ. And if you might remember, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says that every eye will see him even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth, gase, land, will mourn because of him. So, these tribes are going to see, and you ask about this coming, well, I think it's a picture of the Roman army coming, and I would use Luke 21.20 to make that point. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. And we'll put some things together there. So, Luke so Matthew 23, talking about a judgment that's coming up on the first century uh, generation. And let me read you what the disciples, um, this encounter that they have with Christ in, at the very beginning of Matthew 24. They ask him, um, you know, when will these things be? When will, when will it be that one stone will not be left upon another? When will the destruction of this temple, when, when is this going to happen? Okay, so what you've got to do you've got to determine, is this temple that's being asked about in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 3, is this temple in your future? Because if the destruction of this temple is in your future, that means there's going to have to be a rebuilt temple that will be destroyed and the whole paradigm shifts. But if it's in your past, which the Bible clearly says that it is, then everything makes a whole lot more sense. Because Jesus is going to say throughout this, that all of these things are going to come upon this generation, meaning the people that he's talking to. And that fits perfectly with um, chapter 23. So listen to verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? And we've read this verse on this channel 50 times probably. Age is not um, the word world. It is aeon. It is the end of the age, the Old Covenant age. So when you're going through the Gospels and you're studying, you're going to have to make a decision on what you believe about the age that is or the age to come. So you're going to have to ask yourself, am I in this age or the age to come? I believe that we are in the age to come. So the age to come would be a time whenever the new covenant, Galatians chapter 4, would inherit by itself. And what I mean in Herod is you had that 40 years where the old and new covenant were both on the scene. Galatians 4 says, cast out the bondwoman and her son. And the covenant of slavery was the old covenant. Um, but the new covenant had better promises, a better priest, and better covenant. So the age to come is the time when that covenant inherits by itself. And at the culmination of this is the great tribulation. And at the end of the great tribulation, the temple is destroyed in Jerusalem. And that's what's being asked about here. So, Jesus says, look, the whole thing's coming down. And they said, when? Well, it's going to be at the end of the age when this goes down. 
Read with me in verse 15. It says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now, Jesus is telling them they are going to see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Let me take you to where he's bringing this thought up from. He's bringing it up from Daniel chapter 9. And it says in Daniel 9, 26, After 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay? you got to ask yourself again in Daniel 9. This is a direct connection to Matthew 24. Whatever temple Jesus is talking about going down is the exact temple that Daniel 9 is talking about. I don't know anyone that disputes that. If y'all know of somebody that disputes that, please post it down in the comments below. But whatever that is, that's what we're talking about. So he says, They shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Okay, the end of what war? Well, you're talking about the end of the, the Jewish-Roman war that's going on during that time period. And we call that 66 to 70 the Great Tribulation. So Daniel's not talking about the destruction of a temple in our future. Daniel's talking about the destruction of a temple at the end of the Jewish age, the exact temple that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24. Once you see that, then it flows and follows that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, you read this, For then there will be great tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no nor ever shall be. There will be great tribulation, such has not been, nor ever shall be. That's quoted exactly from, I believe it's in Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, we read about a time in Daniel chapter 12 where the power of the holy people uh, will be shattered. And that's in Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. Well, the power of the holy people is talking about this old covenant structure and those who are in covenant with God but had gone apostate. They will be judged at the end of the 70 weeks. And the end of the 70 weeks is 66 to 70, three and a half years. That's your great tribulation. I hope you're following with me there. So Daniel is um, telling about this. And he says, let me just read you Daniel 12:1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there ever was a nation. That's exactly what Jesus is quoting in Matthew chapter 24, verse uh, 21. Same concept. Well, when does Jesus tell us that that will be? Okay. Well, in Matthew 24, 34, Jesus says, this great tribulation is going to be upon this generation. The only way you can do this and move the Great Tribulation is if you manipulate what generation means. If you take it in context with chapter 23, there's no way that you can get around saying Jesus is talking to these people who would see this. They were to flee Judea and to run to the mountains and to get out of the city and not go back on housetop and pray that their flight's not in the Sabbath. He is saying that the Great Tribulation is going to come in their lifetime. And when he says that the Great Tribulation is going to come in their lifetime, I think this needs to be something that's understood by us so we know that the Great Tribulation is not in our future. Why was it such a bad time? Well, here's why I think it was such a bad time. Because God judged the covenant people. And once he judged the covenant people, now I don't want everybody to hear me and hear me clearly here, I am not an anti-Semite by any means. So, Whenever I say that the church is made up of Jew and Gentile, I believe that. Ethnic Jews, a Jewish remnant, the last couple of videos we've been talking about, a Jewish remnant along with the Gentiles that comes out of the Great Tribulation. Okay? So they make that through, whether you picture that in heaven, in Revelation 7 and 14 or not. Um, I think most people do. Um, we can We can see that that way. But if you connect all these passages together, then you've got Daniel 9 saying that at the end of the 70 weeks, or to say another way, the end of the last days, the Great Tribulation happens. Then Daniel 12 says that the Great Tribulation is going to happen at a time when the power of the holy people will be shattered. Okay, If, if you posit that in our future, 
then you're going to have to do one of two things. Number one, you're you're going to have to say that's talking about the Christians because we're the covenant people of God now, and I don't think anybody's playing that game. Or you're going to have to say that everything in Judaism comes back together and that they that the Jews, once again, um, are God's chosen people. So that's when you get into dispensationalism and splitting things up. Hey, the God's got a different plan for the Jews than he does for the Gentiles, and that's where Hagee completely misses it. John Hagee says, don't evangelize the Jews. They don't need the gospel. And he says that he is a friend of the Jews. He, he's not a friend of the Jews. He's an enemy of the Jews. That's not the people who call themselves Jews. They need the gospel. They need to be saved. Uh, and they only can be saved through Jesus Christ. We're not going back to type and shadow because the type and shadow was done away when the temple was destroyed at the end of the Great Tribulation, which is in your past and not in your future. So, when we start thinking about this biblically, what this should do for us as Christians is give us this understanding. And here's the understanding. The kingdoms of this world have become, Revelation 11, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord. We are the kingdom of God. This should make us want to march forward and advance the gospel and advance who he is, not looking for a defeatist mentality. Everybody gets so caught up on, okay, well, what? which view is it? You know, is it all-mill, pre-mill? You know, is it partial practice, post-mill? What, what is it? I, here's the point. We are, and I think it matters, so don't hear me say that I don't think it matters. We are the kingdom of God. He has defeated the enemy. Okay, when we rightly understand that these events are talking about things that are in our past, it affects everything that we do. It affects the way that we live. It affects the way, I heard Doug Wilson say it, it affects the way that we rake our yard, that we rake the rocks or mow our grass or plant a tree. Or it, We understand that there is going to be a future that we need to be building on instead of looking for a defeatist mentality. And I think what this has done with, you know, everybody's looking for... Uh, rapture and antichrist and a rebuilt temple i mean i don't a lot of things i don't understand about that anyway um but i won't get into that here on this video but what it does for me and you is it gives us a solid biblical understanding to say hey we need to get to work Be, and i don't know about a lot of you guys i think a lot of you guys watching this are probably presbyterian but in our baptist culture the entire point of the mission and what we're doing is so that we can get people saved, preach the gospel. Now, Baptists and um, we're part of the Southern Baptist Convention. Our church is, for now, praying to God that things change because it's a train wreck, to be honest. But what this does, it, if you think these things are in your future, then our thought process, and this is a thought process of so many people that I come across, we're trying to see all of these people saved, which is a good thing, okay? But we want to we want to save them because... The Lord's coming and the rapture's coming and the Antichrist is coming and we want to get them out of the Great Tribulation. Well, that's not the commission. The commission was, here's the gospel. You take the gospel and you teach it to the nations. When you think that the world is ending any second and it's going to hell in a handbasket and you're at the doorstep of Armageddon and the Great Tribulation, which, by the way, Armageddon is the war, 66 to 70, that's in the Great Tribulation, at the end of the age, that's there too. Sorry, I didn't mention it, but that's Daniel 27. It says, until the end of the war, desolations are determined. And that's what he's talking about. But when we think that's in our future, we don't take on the mindset of teaching the law of God. We don't take on the mindset of planning for future generations. And if you look around in America, I can tell you exactly what happened. The liberals, they played the long game and Christians played the short game. And until we get our eschatology right, we're not going to play the long game. And until we get our eschatology right, we're in trouble. And we're going to keep hemorrhaging our kids to the people who don't know God, who are planning for a future, and they're planning against your worldview. We better understand that there is a future that we're going to have because the kingdom of God is going to continue to grow, and we need to continue to plant and to plod and to work the ground. Now, hear me say this, and I'll, I'll close this video out this way. When we're thinking about the Great Tribulation, and the Great Tribulation is in our past, I don't take the mindset, and I know that some folks do, especially in the post-millennial camp, that you know there can be ups and downs, and I, they agree with that, but eventually this thing is going to crescendo to this um, peak. I know post-millennials who believe that there's a time when every single person in the world is going to be saved. I am not on that train. 
But hear me out in this. Just because the Great Tribulation is in your past, that doesn't mean that we can't face some of the same concepts in our country today. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but America is not a Christian nation. We call ourselves a Christian nation, but if you'll talk to people, they reason like atheists. Um, what we need to understand is this. We are the kingdom of God. We have much work to do. And I pray that you would um, join in that work. I pray that, that I would be faithful to join in that work so that we could see our country turned around because just because the Great Tribulation happened in the first century, that doesn't mean that America can't go rogue and that God can't send a judgment to judge us. He does it. Go read about how many Exodus themes there are in the Bible. And what the Exodus themes prove is that God brings judgment on a nation. He lifts a remnant up and plants them somewhere else. So when we start thinking about that, we need to understand our country is not invincible. And we better get to work in the grassroots on the ground as the people of God. And not just see people baptized and added to the numbers and the church role. We need to see people taught the word of God and let it produce in them a change of heart. Let it produce in them a change of life so that we can produce a change in generations to come. But when we rightfully understand that the Great Tribulation and these horrible events that the Bible prophesies were in the immediate future and that generation of the readers, then we can understand the time that we're living in. And it's time to get to work. And I pray that you would. I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope some of those passages... Uh, helped you out with Daniel 9 and the destruction of the temple and Daniel 12 when the holy people are shattered at the end of the latter days. Um, put all of that together. Then compare it with the Olivet Discourse. And I didn't go to Luke 21, I'm sorry, but uh, look at Matthew chapter 24. And Matthew chapter 24, I think, is clear, so clear. When we understand um, the symbolism that is borrowed from the Old Testament, then we can understand the timing indicators and see exactly who Jesus was talking to. So, pray it's been a blessing to you. Have a great weekend. God bless you. And uh, thanks for watching the video.